welcome. And I've lit a candle. You might like to light a candle, you might not. If you do so, please do it safely. Now, I've got my uh, Book of Common Prayer with me. You might want to get yours. Or you might know it off by heart, which is amazing. Amazing that you can remember that amount of information. So we'll just wait for a couple of minutes, see who's going to join us tonight. And as we wait, I'm just going to read what is it? I'm just going to read the readings for tonight. welcome good to see you I'm just uh, I switched on live uh, a little bit early just to wait and see if people wanted to join us just going to give it a moment or two longer just to see if anybody else wants to join us so bear with I'm just reading our readings for tonight and um, the psalm tonight is Psalm 8 so you might want to mark that in your book of common prayer hope you've had a good day uh, you can imagine the weather at the moment I am not going to be filming outside tonight so I'm back in my office thank you for joining me um, yeah I wasn't going to sit out in the rain to film outside the church tonight but here we are so if you've got your book of common prayer our psalm tonight is psalm 8 uh, if you want to uh, light a candle, you can. Good evening, Patricia. Good to see you. Well, sort of see you. <laughs> so, I don't know who else is watching. Is it Steve, I wonder? Might be. Welcome anyway, whoever it is. Now, you probably know today is Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday. Special day very special day so if we're all ready with our books and things 
Let's just spend a moment in silence just to prepare our hearts and minds ready to worship God. When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Good evening, Steve. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy and although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits of that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. For there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe in his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. So we turn to Psalm 8. O Lord, our Governor, how excellent is thy name in all the world, thou that hast set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the, out of the mouth of very babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. For I will consider thy heavens, even the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him lower than the angels, to crown him with glory and worship. Thou makest him to have dominion of the works of thy hands, and thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, all sheep and oxen, Yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowls of the air, and the fishes of the sea, and whatsoever walketh through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And so our reading for Trinity Sunday, the first reading, is from Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 to the end. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had the face as a man, and the fourth beast was a flying eagle, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honour and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth for ever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth for ever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power. For thou hast created all things, and for their pleasure they are, and were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we say the words of the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. 
For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And so our second reading, our Gospel reading for Trinity Sunday is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things, these things be? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we say the words of the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared in the, before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, World without end. Amen. And so we say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And so, the collect for Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, who has given unto us thy servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity, we beseech thee that thou wouldest keep us steadfast in this faith and evermore defend us from all adversities who livest and reignest, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Let's say the third collect together. Lighten our darkness we beseech thee O Lord and by thy great mercy defend us from the all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. The loving Lord, on this day of Trinity, Trinity Sunday, we give you thanks for the perfect model of partnership, unity and love that we have in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. We pray for all churches at this time to be beacons of hope, to speak out your good news, Lord to share your gospel message of your salvation, your forgiveness, your love, your grace, eternal rest, life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, Today is the Diocese Day of Prayer for the consultation for the new Bishop of Chelmsford and the prayer for that. God of provision and care, discernment and knowledge, lead us in your love, empower us by your spirit and equip us with your gifts. Give us hearts full of love for all people, minds open to the signs of the times and wisdom to know how to respond to the voice of your calling. 
We ask this through him whose coming is certain, whose day draws near, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray today, create a God for your world. We pray, Lord, for all who are affected by climate change at this time. We pray for our farmers. We pray for farmers throughout the world. We pray for those people whose countries, whose the islands that they live in, wherever they are, are affected by changes in seasons, in changes in the temperature of the sea or the pollution in the sea. And invariably, Lord, these are the poorest of people and yet they are being affected badly. Lord, we pray for them and we pray as well for all of us to consider how we live our lives as we come out of lockdown and how we can make changes to benefit the environmental impact on the world, Lord. We pray as well today, Lord, for a world that is protesting, protesting at injustice, protesting about racism and abuse of power. Lord, you tell all Christians to love our neighbour, to treat as people as we wish to be treated, to speak out against injustice that you have made everyone to be equal. And yet, Lord, we know that we don't treat people equally and that we, we all look on people and judge people. And, Lord, we pray for us to take the log or the speck out of our own eyes we pray for these protests against racism and we speak out against that, that this must stop, that we must see people as another individual, not by the colour of their skin. Lord, we pray for change. Lord, we pray for the protests to be peaceful, for voices to be heard, but for the violence, for the riots to stop. This isn't the way to do it. We speak out against those riots where people are getting hurt, where shops are being looted around the world. We pray for the family of George Floyd and for all all those who receive racist, racist comments or abuse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for, um, I believe it was the anniversary of the D-Day, to do with D-Day landings and things. We remember that how awful war was, the lives that were lost, people whose families were devastated by these losses, the impact on our world of that war. And we pray, Lord, for the the peace the unity the 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 understanding that we gained immediately after that war lord after world war 2 that we may remember 
how we defended and came together in unity to want peace, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving Father, we pray today for our benefits. We thank you for St Thomas's Church. We thank you for St Paul's Church and for St Nicholas Church. Pray for all the parishioners, wherever they are, whatever they're doing. We pray as well for Little Doves, our, our linked nursery. Pray for them as they get ready to open next week. And we pray for the children and families that are getting ready for that. We pray for the wider benefice. We pray for Nave stock, all the little hamlets all around there. We pray for the same around Bentley and the same for Kelvin and Hatch. Pray for all those lives, Lord, for all their different needs, for all the things that are impacting upon them. Praying for our local businesses. Be with them all, Lord, this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving Lord, we pray at this time for all who are unwell. Pray for all those who really need to have tests and treatment. Pray for those who really are scared and anxious. Lord, give them your peace and your calm. We pray, Father God, for those who are pregnant at this time for how they are feeling at the moment and for that baby developing within them. Lord Jesus, in a moment of silence, we name before you those people we are concerned for at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, pray for all who grieve, pray for them, pray for all those who are unable to attend funerals at the moment and those Lord who have loved ones with where it's their anniversary of death at this time, Lord comfort and strengthen them, give them your peace and your calm Lord. Just be with them in their hours of need, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who this evening will come to the end of their earthly life, taking their last breaths. Lord Jesus, you tell us you come back to take us home to you. May you be there at the last. And may they know you as you take them home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let us say the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. So, we've come to the actual end of the Book of Common Prayer service there. But there's some notices, always notices. The notices for today are that we um, are going to try to do, in some shape or form, songs of praise or hymns and pims. And in order to do that, we need to have some hymns. So I'm asking all of you, I'm asking everyone to come up with some hymns by um, end of this week, well, so by next weekend, 
if you could email me some hymns of your choice that you would like to maybe be included in it. Um, I, at the moment we're working on the basis that um, it won't be outside, um, but you never know. But at the moment if we work on the basis that it's somehow going to be on screen, um, and if it is outside how wonderful will that be? But we'll work on the basis of let's just get the hymns together, let's start the planning, the preparation and you never know. So if you could email me your choice of hymn that would be marvellous. Um, also just another notice, uh, we heard that it's the consultation for the Bishop of Chelmsford. If you have any thoughts on that, I did put on Facebook about the consultation process and you can type your own thoughts into that about what you'd like for a bishop. Um, so please do that. Um, if you can't find it on Facebook, it is on the Ch on the Diocese of Chelmsford uh, Ch website. So you'll be able to find it there. Um, another notice to let you know, and I'm trying to remember what it was. That one. Uh, trying to think. The brain's just gone dead. Uh, hopefully it might come to me if not I'll have to type it to you we're still doing zoom coffee mornings on a Thursday morning you'll be very welcome to come and join us I know we can't all because some of us are at work but if you're able to that'd be lovely um, the food bank we did a food bank yesterday I think you've seen about that that was really really good um, and on the news, you've probably seen today that it's saying churches are going to open for prayer from, uh, not this week, but the following week. Um, it's not quite, um, there's a lot more to it than just that. So I'll, we'll be sending out more information on that. Um, there's a lot that we've got to do to do with that. And I've actually put again onto Facebook the actual uh, wording that the Church of England have said regarding that. So if I'm not making much sense, then please do look at that word in it will make it a lot clearer, hopefully. But I will be putting more out. So that's the notices. Um, so some thoughts on today's readings and on it being Trinity Sunday. And Trinity Sunday is always one of those Sundays where... Um, whatever you say in a way can be seen as heresy because how can we, mere mortals, how can we understand the awesomeness, the magnificence, the just how incredible God is, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. We can't begin to understand it fully. Um, I heard one speaker say, "We, you know, it's like an ant trying to understand the internet. It's just... Um, yeah, Patricia, I've just read your note. For private prayer from the 15th of June. Yes, um, but it's quite interesting. When you look at the Church of England, it says about um, supervised. So there's a bit, bit we've got to look into there. Um, yeah, so uh, someone once said, uh, trying to fully understand the Trinity is like being an ant trying to understand the internet. And when I said that to somebody, they went, well, an ant wouldn't be able to understand the internet because an ant's a little insect. And I said, yeah, but <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe it's like looking at a kaleidoscope. Well, you know, the kaleidoscopes where you have to keep turning them around and every time you turn it, so the pattern changes and it looks different and more beautiful or maybe that it forms different colours and it constantly looks incredible and that's why you keep twisting the kaleidoscope because you're just constantly amazed at the patterns and the colours and the shapes. And God is like that. We, we begin to understand or begin to think we understand with our limited knowledge. We begin to understand, ah, that is what God means to me at this moment. And then a few weeks, a few months, a few years down the line, suddenly God has changed again and we see God in a completely different light. And sometimes we, as humans, try to pigeonhole God into little boxes. You know, God is 
like this and if I do this God is like that and if I do this God is like that and you know that's just a nonsense because God is way beyond all of that so how do you explain the Trinity well all we can do is tell people about what God means to us and maybe some of us identify more with the Holy Spirit maybe some of us identify more with the Father maybe some of us identify more with Jesus as our friend our brother our teacher and I think at times we dip into each of them and I think at times we'd say like creator God or Lord or Father or Son or Lamb or Lamb of God or Prince of Peace there's so many names to sort of that kaleidoscope of how awesome how we it changes the shepherd the advocate the comforter all these different aspects of who God is and we'll never fully get it for some people when we say father perhaps if they've had an abusive father they can't at first maybe they can't trust they can't give themselves to that to the word father but over time as I say this changing of how we gradually see God how we gradually grow in faith and knowledge how much they learn that this father God is way more loving cherishing sees us as precious in his sight precious so that if they have been in that situation maybe of not even ever having had a father not knowing their father then they can begin to understand that and Jesus as Lord as brother as friend I always remember somebody saying to me that um, particularly people in China who are turning to, to Christianity, that one of the things that really um, affects how they see God, oh, see is possibly the wrong word, but one of the things that really helps them with their faith or makes them want to turn to God is because when they're told that Jesus, when we're baptised and we become part of God's family, he is our brother and we are in a bigger family, a family of God, that we are united with Christians around the world. For certainly for Chinese Christians, that is massive because they've been told um, for a long while that they could only have like one child per family unit. So those one child never have cousins, never have brothers or sisters. And so to be told that suddenly they're a brother, they have brothers and sisters in China or around the world, that in a, it's mind-blowing to them that they've become part of a bigger family. So again, this Trinity, the Trinity wants us we have this God who wants to be in relationship with us. God is not on a pedestal up high just saying, yes, you lowly, lowly minions down there. God loves us so much. God came down to earth in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, who lived among us, was born of the Virgin Mary, was in, born incarnate. God is a God of relationship, in relationship with the Son, in relationship with the Holy Spirit, each separate, each completely divine, each completely one, but three in one. 
mind blowing that each separate, that each combined in one, combined, I don't know, wrapped up, caught up, unity. And we are invited into that relationship. God the Father reaching out. Jesus the Son here has been here. And then now he is in heaven ready to take us home as we said in the prayers. And he's prepared that for us because he died on the cross for us. And then we have the Holy Spirit who's come from both Father and the Son, who's come, been sent to stay with us, to comfort us, to be our advocate, to strengthen us, to empower us, to transform us. Wow. We have a God of relationships who loves us, cherishes us, sees us as precious and will never, ever leave us. Nothing in heaven or on earth can separate us. How amazing is that? And the grace that we said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost is with us all, now and forever. Amen. Amen and Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for joining in this Book of Common Prayer. I hope you have a lovely evening. And uh, I'll see you in the morning for morning prayer, nine o'clock. So bye for now. Bye. God bless.